All right. Hey, you guys, um, singing. Take a deep breath, fill up your lungs, and uh, as you sing, let the air out evenly over the vocal cords. That's the easiest explanation I could give you. All right, so to get technical, your lungs are pear-shaped. They are smaller at the top, and then they expand down at the bottom. Now, your windpipe comes down through about the middle of your chest. It branches off into both lungs, and something interesting happens here. When you take a breath, you could do one of two things, okay? You could take a breath into the upper part of your chest and fill up the smaller part of the lungs, and cut off your air supply or you could push the air down and start lower and get in much more air the thing is you can't fill up both okay once that passage is breached um, once you try to switch from the lower part of the lung to the upper part of the lung you can no longer take in air so it only makes sense to get a nice full deep breath fill up the bottom part of your lungs let the air out evenly as you sing let it pass your vocal cords evenly for whatever type of note you're singing super low way up high it takes about the same amount of air regardless okay so filling up this reservoir down here is going to help you to hold notes longer it's going to help you to sing longer durations of lyrics so breathing is going to be key number one okay so here's an, another thing um, I tell my students to wear jewelry or watches if, if you wear jewelry or watches i tell my students to put them on the opposite hand and the reason being is this it will remind you every time you see your ring on your wrong hand it'll remind you to concentrate on your breathing to make sure that you're filling up the bottom half of or the bottom part of your lungs it's much more than half much more than the upper part so it's that important and uh, it's actually going to help you uh, in many other aspects of life not just with your singing it's also going to help you if you are an athlete or in conversation you'll be taking much less uh, breaths of air while you when you're in the habit of filling up the lower part of your lungs i'm going to give you a a breathing exercise get out your your uh, smartphone and time yourself you want to take a deep breath and you want to let the air out evenly uh, putting your teeth together and letting out like a, a tss, like a hiss tss. probably looks strange doing that at the supermarket so you know do this in your private time but time yourself and every day push yourself to get a little bit further that is going to mimic singing it's going to mimic the amount of air that you would release over your vocal cords as you're singing. All right, tuning. I tune to A432, which science is telling us that uh, A432 is a more naturally occurring frequency in Mother Nature. Many singers, including myself, find it much easier to sing over an instrument or a song played that's tuned to A432. Prince called it the, divi the divine tuning. All right, so uh, when you're taking lessons from me, you're going to be singing along with A432. So get in the habit of doing it. You might like it yourself. I think you will. Oh, and by the way, I will put up a link below of a uh, A432 video that I put up earlier. So you could tune to that if you haven't already. Okay, I, I call this exercise Sing the Chord. So no matter what level you are as a guitarist, you could sing whatever you can play on your instrument. If you could only play open notes, you could sing those open notes. If you know a, a, a series of scales, you could sing those scales. Any chords that you know, power chords, you could sing those notes. And so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a A minor chord. This is the first string open. The second string first fret with the index finger third string second fret with the ring finger and fourth string second fret with the middle finger and the fifth string is open there's an a minor chord for you and as a, a warm-up exercise what we're going to do is sing the notes of the chord i'm just going to pick out the notes starting with the fifth string and sing it ah uh, then the fourth string forward and then backward
Now that's a little low for my range, that A note there, you heard me kind of hitting the gravel. That's okay. What you're doing with the warm-up is you're stretching your, your singing muscles. So go ahead and, and do that warm-up before you get on stage so that when you do get on stage, you don't choke on a note. All right, you're already expanded your range. You're going to the warm-up is going to be going from a much lower range to a much higher range than you will be singing on stage. So there's your warm-up. You could also uh, warm up with a scale. Here what I'm uh, playing is the E minor pentatonic scale. And just to give you uh, guitar players the notes there, the E note uh, is on the fourth string second fret. I'm playing that with middle finger to the G note on the third string open. A note, third string, second fret. B note on the second string open. Then the D on the third fret. And then the E, high E string, the first string open. And you would sing that. You could run through the vowels. A. kind of like an ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. And there's your warm-up. Of course, play it in reverse. I'm trying to save time because of the, uh, the video here, but uh, you know, when you're warming up, uh, don't cut any corners because when you get on stage and you perform, you're going to have uh, basically stretch, just like a marathon runner will stretch before they do the marathon. Stretch your vocal cords and all those muscles associated with singing before you get on stage and do a performance. Okay, the idea of a warm-up, as I mentioned, is to stretch your range, okay? But don't get in a habit of uh, just doing nothing but warm-ups. You don't go to a performance to see the musician do warm-ups, do you? You go out there, you want to hear him perform, you want to hear him sing a song. So, you know, save time for your warm-ups and stuff, but don't lock yourself in your closet and uh, just do nothing but warm-ups, chords and scales. Get out and sing. That's what it's all about. When you see a performer play their guitar and sing, it could be pretty menacing at times. And uh, just tell yourself that that person didn't just wake up and have that ability. Okay, they learned a few notes and then they built upon that. So we're going to do the same in these lessons. When I teach students to play guitar and sing, I'll ask them for a list of songs, 20, 30 songs, and I'll use that list to pick the first five, the magic five. And I'll start with what I think is the absolute easiest song for them to play guitar and sing and then progressively uh, build up on that and get to a, a harder, more difficult level of both singing and playing. The first five songs, those are going to be the hardest for the rest of your life. If you put your nose to the grind and get those five out of the way this week, you are going to thank me forever because the next... 20 songs are going to be so much easier. Those first five, you're just, you know, you've got your uh, baby, taking baby steps, and you're just learning as you go. Well, once you get five songs under your belt, the, uh, there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. You're going to find some songs that are just a breeze. They come almost naturally. And then other songs, yeah, the, you'll find some difficult tunes that maybe you'll have to brush up on picking patterns or work on your range, uh, singing in the falsetto voice possibly. Um, it's different for all of us, but nothing is going to be as hard as those first five, so get them out of the way as quickly as possible. When we learn a new song, we don't focus on the strumming so much. The important thing is to learn the chord properly and the melody that you would sing over that. On a dark desert highway And then the next chord with the melody you sing over that. Cool wind in my hair. The next step would be to strum in time with the, uh, the song, but changing on, only on the one. We're not worried about the strumming pattern so much as just changing the chords in time with the song. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. 
warm smell of Kalitas. And from there, the next step, I might send a student home with a week's worth of uh, exercises to do with whatever song they're learning the first week. So the first uh, step would be maybe to strum on the one. And then day two, once they're comfortable with singing over that, let's strum on one and three. Two, three, four. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. And then strumming on the beat. One, two, three, four. On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair. Warm smell of Kalitas and work your way up to a level that you're pleased with whether it be a strumming pattern or a picking pattern maybe finger picking on a dark desert highway cool wind in my hair or a combination warm smell of kalitas rising up through the air up ahead in the distance i saw a shimmering light it grew heavy in my sack of dinner. I had to stop for the night. I created the Strum and Sing series to help people get out and start singing as soon as possible. Check out the series here on YouTube. You could also send me requests of what songs you want me to work on next. Go to MarcoCoconut.com. I've got my full set list of all the songs that I perform live at the top of the page. Well, I got the link at the top of the page. But I, I think I got a couple hundred songs on there that I currently do. And um, I'm putting them up here on the Strum and Sing series here on YouTube. So check it out. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope to see you again soon. It has been an honor to be teaching you today. Um, keep in touch. Show the love by subscribing. Share the love by sending this to somebody you know that might be wanting to learn to play guitar or sing or both. Marco Coconut videos are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash marcoconut to help me make more. For just $1 a month, you could gain early access to new content, full access to previous video titles, updates, discussions, and exclusive shows. There have been reports of depression, mania, psychosis, hallucinations, paranoia, delusions, homicidal ideation, aggression, hostility, anxiety, and panic, and bipedial existence. Ask your doctor if Marco Coconut is right for you. Discontinue use if you experience cranial implosions, inability to breathe, death-like symptoms. Do not use Marco Coconut if you are allergic to Marco Coconut. Continued use of Marco Coconut and or music may result in a better life, joyful abundance, increased happiness, feelings of gratitude, beauty, and joy, improved sleep, health, and relationships, love of life, reduced stress, and other possible side effects.